you're anything like me, when you sit down to actually get on with work, there's about a million things that can distract you. YouTube, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, or even just making the excuse of finding the right song before you get started. As someone who works alone for the most part, this is a daily battle I fight pretty much every day. So over the last few weeks or so, I've been experimenting to find my own way of staying super productive on my most distraction heavy device, the iPad. And I wanted to share that with you today. So if you do like iPad and aesthetic tech content, be sure to subscribe. I've got loads of that here on the channel. So come and join the community. Anyway, let's dive right into it. So here's my standard iPad Pro home screen. It's a pretty classic layout with everything I need at my fingertips. And I've got to admit, I've never been huge on widgets in iPad OS and iOS. And even with the latest update, I still find that I'm constantly wrestling with them to make them look good when you rotate the screen specifically. So this screen has a minimal amount of them, which works just about in portrait and landscape without looking really messy. The second screen is full of apps I don't use quite as much, and the third page is full of games that I'm currently playing or looking at getting into. So straight off the bat, there's a lot of distraction here. With any app or notification being a simple tap or swipe away, I often find myself doing anything but work. I especially find that the iPad invites you to interact with things, and with all this here, everything just feels so tempting. To combat this, I've made use of iPad OS 15's focus modes to craft some specific screens that help keep things distraction free. And using a shortcuts widget, I've made a really simple way of jumping in and out of them. I'll show you how to make these two towards the end of the video, so make sure you stick around if you want to see how to do that. Okay, so first up is my productivity screen. A simple tap on productivity in the shortcuts widget brings me to an entirely different setup with all my work applications front and center. Not only does it shift me to this screen, but it silences all my notifications apart from a set few that I allow and tells everyone that's chatting to me through iMessage that I'm working and might not be available to reply until later. This productivity mode is totally focused on work. There are no other screens other than the app library to swipe between, so I don't get easily distracted. If I do need to access other apps though, that's not listed on this screen, I just pull down from the top and use Spotlight to grab it. On the left side, I've got a bunch of widgets that are more useful in this working style setup, starting with the Dawn Calendar app, which is a really nice minimal calendar. Under that, I've got Microsoft To Do, so I can keep track of everything I've got going on for that specific day. And underneath that, I've got my Notion favorites. I really like this widget specifically. It allows me to jump to my most useful Notion pages without having to sift through the actual app. And it's good for checking things really quickly. I've got my content calendar, Instagram post ideas, and my overall video roadmap on here. So it's nice and easy to get access to. But here's the secret productivity source, at least for me. As mentioned, my major flaw is finding music to listen to before I actually work. So I usually rely on an online radio like Paul Suite FM or the Lo-Fi YouTube channels, but sometimes even that slows me down. So I made this really simple Lo-Fi button that's incorporated into my shortcuts widget. A quick tap on that launches the classic Lo-Fi Girl YouTube channel and then reopens my home screen, giving me an instant soundtrack to work to. I do have YouTube Premium, so this works well for me. However, if you don't, you can always set it to open in Safari so it can keep playing in the background. Now, I would love to get this to work with Spotify, but sadly, Shortcuts doesn't support it at the time of recording this video, at least. And there is a few tricky workarounds, and Spotify does have its own widget, but none of them really work that well for me. If you are on Apple Music though, there's a lot more flexibility and you could make this work really nicely with anything you have on that app. So that's definitely worth keeping in mind. Once that lo-fi soundtrack kicks in, I know I'm ready to start working and the lack of other apps and notifications coming in means I can work on anything I need to without having to worry that I'll wander off and start doing something else. You might have noticed that productivity isn't the only button on my shortcuts widget. After finding some good success with this layout for productivity, I decided to make one for gaming. 
Again, another simple tap brings me over to my gaming corner of the iPad. Like the productivity area, this silences my notifications apart from a few and tells people on iMessage that I might be late in getting back to them. So this is my gaming setup screen. It's got everything I'm playing or having a go on right now. I really do like the continue playing widget at the top left, which allows me to jump back into my latest game. And the battery life widget is really useful if you have a controller connected to see how much longer it's got left in it. And of course, the shortcut widget sticks around at the bottom too. This screen also has another trick up its sleeve too, which I really, really like. When you connect a controller to the iPad, it will automatically launch into this mode, which is really cool. I think that was a standard feature when setting up this screen by Apple, because I didn't click anything to make it do that. It kind of just does, which is awesome, but you can turn it off if you don't like that. So that's the second setup for gaming. Lastly, there is one final button on the shortcuts widget that returns me, well, home. Tapping this disables all of the silencing notifications and brings me back to my standard iPad setup that I use day to day when I'm just using it for regular tasks. I really, really like the way this whole system with focus mode works, and I think it might take a little more tinkering to get it perfect, but this is a setup I've been using pretty much since focus modes came out on iPadOS 15. Of course, there are some issues though. I'd like to point out that they are quite nitpicky and there's no major concerns, and maybe they'll even be addressed in a future iPadOS update. But first off, when you enter into these modes, it syncs across all of your Apple devices. So your iPhone, for instance, will also go silent and stop receiving notifications, which is fine, but you might just not want it to do that. Secondly, you can't change what goes in the dock for each layout. I'd love to be able to customize that per home screen, but you're stuck with what you set out from the start. I don't hate that too much, but I'd love to have custom docks for each focus mode. And finally, I wish you could set a different wallpaper for each custom screen too. I think that would really help you get into a different mindset when using the iPad. And there may be a way to do this in automations and shortcuts, but I haven't found anything like that yet. So if there is, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, that's kind of it in terms of teething pains with these focus modes. Overall, that's how I have my iPad set up. And if you want to do something similar, let me run you through making different home screens, setting up focus modes, and most importantly, getting that shortcuts widget working too. The easiest way of doing this, at least I found, is to create your separate screens first. So head over to your iPad, enter wiggle mode by holding your finger on the screen, and swipe over until you get a new page. You can then start building a brand new page by dragging apps from the app library. And here's a tip, you can actually get duplicates of an app too, so you can drag out an app that may already be in use on another page and put it in your new page, which is really ideal. So repeat this process until you've got a bunch of pages you want to shortcut to. But the first thing you want to do is make sure you hide them from your normal view. Do this by holding into jiggle mode and then hit the dots at the bottom and then deselect the pages you just made. Don't worry, they're not gone for good, they're just gone for now. Next, head over to your settings menu and select focus and then hit the plus at the top right and tap custom. Pick a color, glyph and name it and then tap next. The next two screens allow you to set notification settings for your apps while you're in a focus mode. After sorting that, the focus mode is basically done though. Before you go though, you'll want to set your newly custom home screens. So tap that, toggle on custom pages, then select the home screens you want to show or hide while you're in that mode. Then repeat this step for each focus mode you've made until you're done. With that out the way, next up you're going to want to set up the shortcut widget for this. Luckily, this is a really easy one to do, so stay with me on this one. Open up your shortcuts app and then tap on the plus to make a new shortcut. Use the search bar and type in focus, then select set focus. Next, press on the on button so it stays on until turned off, like this, and then tap on do not disturb and change that to the focus mode you want to set. Do this for all of your focus modes that you have set up. Once that's sorted, you'll want to get the home button set up too. So to do that, create another new shortcut, type in focus again, tap set focus, and make sure it's just set to turn off all of your focus settings and you're done. All right, now all you need to do is add the widget to all of your separate home screens. Enter jiggle mode again and enter the widget window and then scroll to shortcuts, swipe along to the four stack widget or eight if you've got loads more and add it to your home screen. After you've done that, you'll be totally set and you can start using focus modes to your advantage on your iPad. Of course, you don't need to do it that way. You can just pull down from the top right and set your focus modes like that, but I much prefer it with these buttons. 
That pretty much rounds up this video and how I've been getting the most from focus mode settings on the iPad and how I like implementing them to work nice and easily. Do let me know in the comments below if this is something you're using and let me know if there's any cool shortcuts I should check out. I feel like I've only scratched the surface here and I'd love to learn more about them. As ever, pop a like on the way out, that would be massive and I will see you all in the next one.